What do you think about the meteor? Man? Yeah, I love it, man. Like this is great. Uh, capturing stories. Uh, there's so many, so many stories. You know, that they come out of this ministry. It's just miracles every single day. Yeah, and we got we got a b- picture of a bunch of them up here. That's not all of them. That's maybe. Yeah, man. Like one, one hundredth. No, it, it's so cool. Just, just the amount of people that come through here, the amount of families and lives that change. I mean, statistically, all right, so the, this is just the bare, bare numbers that are according to, uh, to, to research that like 7% of the population is, uh, is affected by drug and alcohol addiction personally. Um, and so if you look at that 7%, I mean, you think that there's got to be a certain percentage of those individuals that have kids, uh, and then, then a lot of them have to have parents, and a lot of those parents, you know, have had parents. And so, I mean, like instantaneously, just right off the bat, you can make a, a strong argument uh, that statistically speaking, at least 40%, I would say, of the world is affected by drug and alcohol addiction. Mm. And uh, John 3.16 is the leading uh, provider for care. Uh, you guys have more beds uh, than anywhere else in the entire state of Arkansas, man. And you're taking broken men free of charge right. and teaching them how to live for Christ. Yeah. Well, that's uh, like what you do. You know, I, I, I know John 3.16 has uh, been a big part of both of our lives. And you said it uh, eight years sober, uh, you know, off drugs and, and, and clean. And a half, bro. Eight and a half. Yeah. Uh, and I think you came from jail straight here, so you can accredit yeah. that. But but uh, what do you got going on yourself? Uh, yeah. The director of M18 Recovery in Little Rock. Well, I'm Blake Polston, yeah. and I'm the executive director of M18 Recovery. <laughs> uh, M18, we are a uh, faith-based facility located in the heart of downtown Little Rock. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's it, it was influenced largely by John 316 Ministries. Uh, craziest thing ever. So... Uh, I got arrested in 2013 uh, for manufacturing just about every chemical known to man. Uh, I was making ecstasy, GHB, DMT, uh, daily user of ketamine. I was making ephedrine so that I could make meth. I was making counterfeit currency. Uh, I had about 52 chemicals in my house and I'd synthesized most of them myself and uh, I'd lost the will to live. Bottom line is uh, I was supposed to be someone, uh, but I woke up one day and I was uh, almost 30 years old and I uh, had a uh, ridiculous amount of student loan debt, still had no degree, I had felonies on my record. Um, I, I had nothing that I thought that I was supposed to have, so here was my plan. Uh, I was gonna learn how to make drugs so that I could pay off my student loans, so that I could get a degree, so that I could get a good job, so that I could find a wife, so that we could settle down together, uh, so that then we could get back into church. And uh, <laughs> as, as weird as that sounds, uh, that was my that was my game plan. And uh, I thought you had to clean yourself up, you know, before you uh, come to know Christ. But uh, luckily you don't. Uh, Anyway, that didn't work. Uh, Praise God. Uh, God had different plans. And so I got arrested. And uh, as I got arrested, I gave my life to Christ there in handcuffs and uh, spent 38 days in jail. And uh, after those 38 days, Brian Tuggle, the director of John 316, he, uh, he comes to get me out of jail. And uh, I had just talked to my grandma right before then. And I said, you know, I said, I haven't asked for anybody to get me out this entire 38 days. I said, "Uh, I think it's time. I said, could you reach out to Brian? Well, anyway, the next visit uh, was Brian. And he said, you know, he said, I've reached out to Renewal Ranch. He said, they're full. He said, plus they've got your brother. Uh, He said, so they don't want to take the two of you together. He said, so uh, he said, we're going to take you. And uh, I said, okay. He said, "Uh, I told him the prosecuting attorney that, you know, years ago, uh, I had a chance to do Bible studies with you whenever you were my stepson. He said, but uh, I didn't take advantage of that. He said, and I told him I would like that opportunity again. And uh, so, you know, year, years later, uh, my, my former stepfather uh, comes and gets me out of jail and uh, brings me to John three sixteen man. And I spent two and a half of the most glorious years I've ever spent in my life uh, at John three sixteen Ministries. And I uh, felt a call uh, to, to go somewhere else, man. I didn't think I'd ever get that call in my life. Um, never. I thought I'd be here till the day that I died. There was no reason for me to leave. Uh, this place was magnificent, doing God's work. And uh, ended up getting called to, uh, to, to pastor at New Life Church, man. That's uh, awesome. And then from there, we, uh, we decided we weren't called to be church pastors necessarily. Uh, addiction was too much of our story. And so we felt called to be uh, directors of a recovery facility. And so we planted M18 Recovery in downtown Little Rock, my wife Ashley and I. And uh, we've been doing it ever since. Yeah. Well, hey, out of all those blessings, I I noticed you missed one. Oh, that you're my brother? Yeah, that's right. Hey, yeah. yeah. You became my brother. Holla, holla. Yeah, I'm taking his wife out to lunch here in a second. Hey, yeah. Yeah, easy. (laughs) 
Yeah. <laughs> the only person that could say that is her brother. I'm good. I'm good. My it's little good. sister, man. Yeah, you married my little sister. Somehow yeah. you snuck in the family. I don't know either. It must have been Jesus <laughs> put me in that one. But. Yeah, the gate's narrow, man. <laughs> but uh, that's right. <laughs> But uh, man, it's uh, always a blessing. I've always, I always look forward to hearing what you have to say. Ever since the first time I heard you speak in, uh, in Bible study up at the, up at the kitchen, you know, I, I was like, man, I got it, I got it near to hear this guy. Um, and and then my my mom came and visited. I was still a resident. My mom came and visited, and she saw you up there speaking. Ashley played her guitar special, oh, and yeah. man, it was it was something else. And my mom said that that could be you, you know, that could be you someday, or. or uh, you know, and, and she just, she always looked at, at you and, and was able to see me. And, and before that, there was Nolan Deal. You know, my mom always would come out here and visit years before I got here, yeah. like in 2007, yeah. you know. And, and so I've been hearing about these guys at John 316 Ministries and their abilities and special gifts and, you know, the things that, that God's given them uh, and how they're able to use them whenever they are able to get out of their own way. Yeah. You know, uh, very gifted uh, brain to be able to produce 52 chemicals. <laughs> You know, uh, well, it's easy, I, easier than one might think. Right, you just go to a mimosa tree, <laughs> dig up the roots, and you know. But anyhow, I, you know, I just, I know that that uh, man, it's it's a blessing to get to be a part of your life to to see what you're doing, but also get inspired by that, yeah. uh, and how that we're able to work together as a team because it's, uh, you know, I heard you say. John three sixteen ministries will always be a part of your life, and oh, yeah. you know I know M eighteen recovery is your life right now. Uh, but that being said, it, it came from John three sixteen ministries, which came from Jesus, yeah. uh, and how that we're able to work together because we're on the same team. We're not on a on a different team just because oh, you guys wear black not. shirts and we wear red shirts. <laughs> uh, hey, speaking of that, uh, what, one of the craziest rebukings that I ever got while I was at John three sixteen was a. Uh, yeah, it's about solidarity, man. And whenever you come into recovery, it's about being a part of the team. It's about not, you know, trying to stand out and be your own person. And so that's one of the things that you have to kind of whittle down. I mean, even John the Baptist said that I must decrease so he can increase. Oh, yeah. So uh, I had a uh, I had a pretty large personality whenever I first come in here. And uh, even as an instructor, uh, we we wear Jesus tan. We have khaki jackets that have the John three sixteen logo on it. And uh, one time I asked Brian, I said, "Hey Brian," I was like, "Uh." How about I get a black jacket, like just like like a black, you know, like pea coat or something with the John three sixteen logo, and he looked at me with those ice blue eyes, and he said, "So you mean to tell me that everybody else gets Jesus tan, and you want black?" And I I did I still didn't recognize that this was a baited question, and uh, and, and I said, "Yeah." Yeah, no. Nah, uh, <laughs> from, from then on, I just accepted my members only John three sixteen right, jacket. Hey, I got one I, hanging up at the. Yeah, the it's uh, you know it's great, man. Uh, I've got my Paddington Bear coat uh, at the house, and I still rock it from time to time. Yeah, ours man, is. So. I think ours are York and Noble or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, Ra Roundtree and York. Yeah, Roundtree and yeah, York. That's, that's what it, it is. man. No, Brooke, I, Barnes and Noble. Yeah, but it's not about that. What it's about, man, is that uh, John three sixteen did it. Uh, it whittled away at who I was as an individual. Uh, in a good way, and uh, it made me focus more on being Christ-like, man. Uh, it yeah. made, me, made me focus less on building my own personal empire and kingdom and more on focusing on building Christ's kingdom, and uh, that, that's what we do. Uh, and, and look, I'm telling you right now, if there's anybody out there uh, that's thinking about John 3.16 uh, and, and, and supporting them, please do, uh, because I'll tell you right now that most, the majority of the faith-based recovery centers across the state of Arkansas uh, are actually founded and planted by John 3.16 graduates, so there's got to be something to it, man. Uh, this place is sa saving lives. Uh, it's changing people. Uh, it, it's leading them towards Christ. It's leading them out of addiction, uh, and it's restoring families, and that's the most important part, and so if there's anybody out there on the fence, I'm telling you, there's real things happening here at John 316. Right. And then, of course, if you're in downtown Little Rock, which there's a huge, huge population in downtown Little Rock, uh, get involved with the guys at M18 Recovery. They're always looking to uh, impact the, the community's lives, not just the lives of people on drugs, but the, the lives of people less fortunate, the lives of people more fortunate. Um, going out and helping the New Life Church uh, on the downtown campus, and you can always see them out, outside, you know, doing handshakes and uh, man, I always think it's great. Y'all dress up every Sunday wearing jackets and all your fresh white shoes and all that stuff, man. It just yes. our guys, man. Like I don't know. We we need to do a YouTube video on how to keep shoes white. Like I don't even know how to do it, but our guys keep the freshest sneakers on. Like I, I don't even understand. Yeah, we walk gravel here, so it's like if you don't buy <laughs> shoes that are already brown, they they become brown within a week. Yeah. Um, but it's, most of us just wear boots, you know. Yeah. 
Well, what we, what we think of ourselves as is uh, we, we think about every now and then whenever the, the kid leaves the country and he moves into the city, uh, that's where we are. We're located right in the heart of downtown Little Rock. Uh, we, uh, we do have a little bit of a different personality, uh, but the heart of it is all the same. Man. Right. And we teach that Christ uh, can restore you, uh, he can heal you, and uh, he wants to. And he's just waiting on you to make the decision to come to him. And that's as right. soon as you do that, uh, he'll take care of everything else. You don't have to have a meth lab to find Jesus. That's I right. That. Although yeah. if you do have a meth lab, uh, he, there's still hope. There's still hope for you. <laughs> You yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, Blake, uh, thank you very much for for joining us in here today, and uh, you know, coming to help inspire and provoke thought. You know, um, I never, I never knew that I needed thought provoked in my own life. I always thought I had pretty good ideas myself, but but yeah. thank you for taking time out of your day to come and help uh, us in here. You know, Ivy's the new guy back there playing with the microphone bag. Uh, of course, Luke's going to be the one that's on the MacBook helping edit, and uh, <laughs> Ivy's going to be right there by him. But, uh, you know, we're grateful in this room, but not just in this room, all these guys at John 316. Thank you for, for yeah, helping. Well, you know, we, we, we take it seriously. Uh, we do. Uh, we know that God has uh, has blessed us immensely, and it's not just so that we can hang on to it. It's so that we can bless other people, so that we can utilize the influence that we already borrowed. Uh, we borrowed all the influence that we have at M18 from New Life Church and from John 316 Ministries. Uh, but now, in return, we get to share that influence that we have with all of these guys that are here at John 316 so that we can help them get planted on a firm foundation. I mean, you guys are in Charlotte, Arkansas. God love it. Uh, but whenever you know it comes time to work and to find employment and to move out and to have a church family, uh, that's what we moved to downtown Little Rock for, man, so we can bridge that gap in the kingdom work that we're doing. Yeah. And so we uh, appreciate you for letting me be here. Absolutely. Thank you for watching John 316 Ministries, where we don't offer treatment. We offer the cure. Thank you, guys.